Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify 13 recent past exam questions on Chapter 3, The Circulatory System. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the complete exam preparation course on Udemy, which contains literally everything you need to excel in your IGCSE exam and nothing more. The 53 individual topic videos provide you with mark scheme responses to any question that could be asked and allow you to revise for your exam in an extremely short period of time. Check the link in the description to find out more. Let's begin. Question number one is on topic 3.1 and as always you can head down to the description of this video and find links to the short summary videos containing literally everything you need to know on chapter 3. So if you don't understand the question, go and watch the relevant video, then come back and attempt it. Complete the table to compare the lumen size and wall thickness for the named blood vessels for four marks. Okay, so we're comparing the arteries and capillaries here, and we'll have a look at the difference in lumen size, which is the space within the blood vessels first. So arteries have larger lumens than capillaries, and capillaries have extremely narrow lumens, or one blood cell thick in diameter. In terms of wall thickness, the arteries have thick muscular walls to deal with the high pressure blood that flows through them, and the walls of the capillaries are only one cell thick, which of course enables gaseous exchange. So four marks there, and have a look at the mark scheme. Pause the video here if you'd like to compare your answers to that mark scheme. Next question is describe one function of valves in the heart. So one mark, a simple mark here. Valves ensure that blood flows in one direction through the heart, or in other words, it prevents the backflow of blood. So we'll look at the mark scheme. It says regulates blood flow or ensures that blood flows through the heart in one direction or ensures that blood flows at an appropriate rate or allows blood to be forced into the ventricles or prevents blood from flowing backwards. So just saying prevents backflow would have been enough to get you the mark there as well. Next question, identify two types of blood vessels. So identify is just the same command word as name. So we need to name two blood vessels and I've gone for arteries and capillaries but the other one we could have gone for was veins. So two easy marks there. The next question is to describe a function of each of the following components of blood for two marks. So we've got white blood cells here and plasma. What's the function of white blood cells and the function of plasma? So white blood cells defend against pathogens like bacteria and viruses, whereas plasma helps to transport the other components of blood as it's the liquid component of the blood, so it helps the blood to flow and therefore transporting components of blood, nutrients, gases, etc. So we'll have a quick look at the mark scheme. We could have gone for the white blood cells are the cells of the immune system. They defend the body against pathogens, which I mentioned, and they create antibodies to attack disease-causing organisms. The plasma aids transportation or carries platelets, red blood cells, white blood cells, etc. So transporting the other components of the blood, which is what I mentioned. Um, also transports enzymes and waste products from the kidneys, liver and lungs for excretion. So waste products like lactic acid and carbon dioxide. It also plays a role in maintaining blood pressure since it's the liquid component of the blood and helps the body to maintain temperature and it also affects the viscosity or thickness of the blood as well. So lots of things we could have talked about for the plasma. Next question, the diagram shows the heart with structures labelled A, B and C. Identify the structures labelled A, B and C for three marks. So a simple naming exercise here. A is the right atrium. Okay, remember that as we look at a diagram of the heart, the left side as it appears is actually the right side of the heart. So we need to imagine that it's our heart and we're facing outwards from the screen. B is a valve. Uh, we could have been specific there and talked about the tricuspid valve or the uh, atrioventricular valve, but valve will be enough for a mark, as we'll see in a moment when we have a look at the mark scheme. And then C is that left ventricle. So what have we got? The tricuspid valve was the only difference there. So valve was enough, but if we put tricuspid, that would have got us a mark as well. Next question is to describe the function of structure B and the function of structure C for two marks. So structure B is our valve. What's the function of that in terms of the heart? It prevents blood from flowing backwards from the ventricle to the atrium, I put in brackets there. So as this ventricle contracts, it should be forcing the blood off through the pulmonary artery towards the lungs. And when it contracts, this valve closes and therefore prevents the blood from flowing backwards and up back into the atrium. Okay, function of structure C, so the left ventricle, 
This contracts and forces blood around the body via the aorta. So I've included that additional bit of detail as well. This is the aorta, the blood vessel here that transports blood off to the body. So the function of the ventricle is to force blood as it contracts off to the body via the aorta. Okay, let's have a quick look at the mark scheme. So B prevents the backflow of blood. That would have been enough for a mark. It ensures blood flows in one direction. It allows blood to flow into the ventricle and regulates blood flow as well. So it also enables blood to move downwards from the atrium into the ventricle. And then C contracts to push blood out of the heart into the aorta or off to the body. We could have also said that it receives blood from the left atrium as well. Okay, next question on topic 3.1, state two characteristics of veins. Okay, so two things that we can say about veins. First of all, they carry blood towards the heart. We know arteries carry blood away from the heart, but veins carry it back towards the heart. And they contain valves to prevent the backflow of low pressure blood. Okay, the mark scheme says that the veins carry blood towards the heart, which I mentioned. They usually carry deoxygenated blood, except for that pulmonary vein, which is carrying oxygenated blood from the lungs back towards the heart. They have thin walls, large lumens, and contain valves to prevent backflow, which I also mentioned there. Okay, next question. The diagram shows the human heart with structures labeled A, B, and C. This is feeling very familiar, as we had a go at a very similar question just a couple of questions ago. Identify the structures labeled A, B, and C and describe a different function of each structure. So six marks available here. What are the structures first of all? In fact, we'll go back to the diagram. The A is the right atrium. The B, again, that tricuspid valve or atrioventricular valve there. And C is the left ventricle. So exactly the same diagram as the one we looked at for that previous question. Uh, what's the function of these three structures? So the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body via the vena cava. So this is a different point that I put down last time. We could have also said that it contracts and forces blood down into that right ventricle. The valve prevents blood from flowing backwards, so from that right ventricle back into the atrium, it prevents that from happening. And then the left ventricle receives oxygenated blood from the left atrium. We could have also, of course, said that it contracts and forces blood off to the body via the aorta, that big artery there. But let's have a look at what the mark scheme has uh, gone for as well. So the right atrium, in fact, you can pause the video here and have a look through as we've already gone through this one. But the main points or some of the main points have already been covered in my responses. OK, the next question. The table shows the heart rate and stroke volume of a performer. Calculate the cardiac output of the performer and state the unit of your answer. So two marks here for calculating the correct answer and one for stating the unit. So first of all, we need to remember the equation for calculating cardiac output, and that is cardiac output equals heart rate multiplied by stroke volume. So in this case, 70 beats per minute multiplied by 72 milliliters equals 5.04. Okay, so that is our answer, and the unit for cardiac output is liters per minute. Really simple mark scheme to interpret here, so the correct answer, as you can see, exactly the same as what I've put, and the unit is liters per minute. It does say that other units like milliliters per minute would have also been accepted. Next question is to describe two structural differences between arteries and veins. So two differences between arteries and veins for two marks. The first one is that arteries have a narrower lumen than veins and veins have a wider lumen. Remember this asks for differences so we need to say both sides. Um, if I make a point about arteries I also need to make a point about veins as well. And then the second one is arteries have thick muscular walls, whereas veins have thinner walls. OK, let's have a look at the mark scheme. What else could we have gone for? So the thickness of walls, the width of the lumen there. Artery walls have elastic tissue, whereas the uh, walls of veins have less elasticity. And veins have valves, whereas arteries do not. So talking about valves is a, is a very obvious point and an easy one to remember as well. Okay, next question is to describe the structure and function of capillaries for two marks. Okay, so the structure I've gone for is that the walls of capillaries are only one cell thick, and then the function of capillaries is to enable gaseous exchange, or the exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen. Let's have a quick look at the mark scheme. What other structures could we have gone for? Well, the walls of the capillaries are one cell thick, that's the one I went for. The capillaries are very small in width, or they have a very narrow lumen and they're selectively permeable, so they only allow some substances but not others to pass through. 
Then the function of capillaries, they allow gaseous exchange, that's what I mentioned. Um, they allow oxygen and nutrients to diffuse into cells and allow waste to be removed from the cells like carbon dioxide and lactic acid. And capillaries also connect arteries to veins. Okay, next question is to define the following. So definition of heart rate and stroke volume for two easy marks. Heart rate is the number of times the heart contracts or beats per minute. And then stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected from the heart per beat. And the units there would have been milliliters, which you could have included. Always a good idea to add additional detail. Uh, but two marks for the number of heart contractions or beats per minute, that's heart rate, and then the volume or amount of blood pumped out of the heart in one beat or per beat for stroke volume. Next question is to describe how to calculate cardiac output using heart rate and stroke volume. So we've already been over this one, but we need to just state the equation for calculating cardiac output. And cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. That's enough for the mark there. And that was it for this session on the circulatory system. So 13 recent past exam questions attempted there. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. As always, I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for a breakdown of questions on chapter four, energy supply and the effects of exercise on the body.